What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. Last episode, we set up this applied energistic system behind us. We got some auto crafting going on and things like that. We expanded out this room down here where our water wheels were. And since last episode, I went ahead and I cleared out the rest of the space that we had down here. Pretty much my idea was since we have all these claimed chunks, you can see the blue squares on the map here. I kind of feel like we should just dig underground all the way around where those blue squares are. That's all of our claimed chunks that we have upstairs. Uh, that's part of the village and the area that we're calling our base, right? So if we dig down here, all of these areas should be chunk loaded and we can just do some stuff. So, you know, I just figured we might as well clear this out since it was already looking a little bad. That looks a little bit better. Put the floor in everywhere, got the lighting going on so we're not spawning monsters. I think it's much better. I also moved our water wheels down a block like I said it was going to do. And I've just been doing a little bit of rearranging here. Moved our basic capacitor over this way. It was almost impossible to try and right click it while it was right there to charge up my armor again, to charge up my staff of traveling. So yeah, I moved it closer so it's right there for easier access. Cool. All right, so we were working with a lot of applied energistics last time. Today, I think we're going to take a break from that, at least for the first part of today's episode. And we're going to look at doing a little bit of spawner action. So I've been trying to see what we got as far as mob spawners in this pack. So we have the standard powered spawner, which we've used quite a bit from Ender.io. You take a spawner, you break it, you combine it with an anvil with the powered spawner, and then it turns into a power spawner of that type. You provide a power and then you spawn in enemies, right? So that seems pretty cool. That's a thing that we could do. Uh, there's also, actually, I didn't even see these. I guess there's spawner blocks. These must be like some kind of boss monsters from Abyssal Craft. I'm not really sure what this is all about. Uh, let's see. We have the spawner from RF Tools. This is kind of an interesting one. You make the block and then you have to beam in certain types of items into it, depending on the monster, like dirt or bread or whatever it is. So we could do that. But again, that uses power. Power is a thing that we really don't have a lot of right now. Uh, we were looking at, what was it? The, um, can't remember. What was the thing we were looking at before as far as the monster spawners go? It took me a moment there to remember what it was. We were, we were looking at soul shards, the old ways, right? Soul shards, the old ways, this stuff. So we were looking at this as a possibility for making a mom spawner, but in order to get the soul shards to work, you already have to have those monsters and you have to be killing them, right? So we can't just jump right into this mod. We need to have something that's spawning those monsters. Then we can upgrade from that spawner into the soul shards. So back to the spawners here. Uh, we have a spawner changer, which we can capture a monster in like a soul vial. And if we click it onto a spawner, it will change that vanilla spawner to that type. So that doesn't cost power at all. All it does is require us to be near it. So I think that would be a good idea. So if we get ourselves a monster spawner, we get ourselves a spawner changer and we find ourselves a witch, for instance, we can capture that witch, change the spawner to a witch spawner, and then we have all the witches. Then when we're spawning in those witches, we can kill it with the soul shard stuff. And then we can start making ourselves a soul shard based on witches. I think that is probably the best idea that we could do right now. Uh, unless we want to wait on these power spawners for forever, because we're just not making a whole lot of power. Uh, so to do this, the spawner changer, we're going to need some magma cream, which is easy. We're going to need spawner shards, which we have to to break a spawner to get each spawner shard. We have one right now from when we broke the silverfish spawner. Uh, and then we also need a block of diamond. Yeah, we put a block of diamond in front of our laser to get this crystal block. And then we put that on the empower and we empower it to this one, right? So it's nine diamonds, four spawners that are broken and four magma cream. So that's not super difficult in order to get the spawner changer. Then we also need to get ourselves a spawner, right? So a spawner we can get from the nether, but we need a way to move it. So a good way to move it from mechanism is using a cardboard box. So over here in our carpenter, we have some wood pulp. Wood pulp can be put into a two by two crafting grid to make a cardboard box. 
And you can use this to move around any tile entity, including spawners. So this carpenter right here has got the stuff in it, some biomass. We can cardboard box it, break this, and then set it over there. And shift right click on it. So we still got our biomass, all the stuff in there, and the spawner, or I'm sorry, the carpenter has been moved. So yeah, <laughs> this is a really cool way of moving things around. So we will be using this in order to get ourselves our spawner from probably the nether, I think. Uh, that's the most common spot that we have right now to get that kind of stuff. Yeah, because we want to collect like a blaze spawner and then change it, right? I think that's probably what we're going to end up doing. Um, yeah, and there's a lot, of, a lot of blaze spawners in the nether that we can just break because there's, you know, so many of them. It's about the only place I know of that we can find spawners that are spawning all over the place without a lot of work, right? Anyway, uh, so cardboard box, we'll need to make ourselves a spawner changer. So we need to go find ourselves three more spawners to break them. Yeah, we already got our silver fish spawner here, plus broken our spawner shards, I guess. Uh, so if we do this and it turns out this is too slow or it sucks and we think we want to upgrade to a power spawner at that point, all we got to do is just break the wish spawner and then combine it with the powered spawner. So we have to do the step anyway, right? It just kind of makes sense to just go this route. Uh, let's go ahead and start. We'll make ourselves a block of diamond. Well, I guess we already have a block from our bag that compacted it before. We'll go and put this in front of our laser over here and then we'll look at empowering this guy. Oh, you know what? Magnet is in my bobble slot. Now is one of those times I need to turn it off. Cool. So there is our diamond block. We just need to empower that with, I don't remember what it was, two clay, clay block, light blue dye. That seems pretty easy to do. All right, clay. We already have a clay block. We have two clay pieces. And then blue dye, light blue dye. Um, can we just do lapis and bone meal maybe? Yes, we can. All right, so that's all we need to do. All right, so very, very simple method of doing this. Just place these guys here, this, this, and this. And that just costs power. I'm not really sure how long that takes, but I'm sure it'll take just a few moments here. Anyway. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the rest of this stuff together. I'm going to head to the nether, see if I can find three blaze spawners to break so we can make our spawner changer. Then we got to find a witch and then we got to find another spawner in order to change. So let me go and get some work done and we'll be right back guys. All right guys. So here we are in the nether. I found another nether fortress. Now previously we've been yeah going to this nether fortress right here. That's our portal. Uh, so this is our main nether fortress. I think we kind of went over here and we discovered another one at some point, but very quickly I just went down south and I discovered one right here. So this is where we are right now. Pretty sure we'll be able to find ourselves a bunch of things that we want. I just killed a uh, withered skeleton. I got a withered dust and drop of evil. It looks like there's another withered skeleton up here. So we might get lucky and get a withered skeleton skull. We are going to be needing those. Oh, oh, stay back. Stay back. Uh, we got another wither dust. Okay, so that's fine. So drop of evil, that is an item that we need in order to turn a spawner into a disturbed mob spawner. So that might be something that we do instead of just leaving as a vanilla spawner. We could turn it into a disturbed mob spawner after we turn it into a witch spawner. And then we can spawn them in much faster. I don't know. We have a few different options here for our spawners, but that does require GP. And I think we had a little bit of extra GP remaining. Now it looks like we have some wither skeletons all over the place. My goodness, I've never seen this many just kind of hanging out. Uh, so we also have blaze. Let's take one of these fire resist potions. All right. So yeah, we got blaze spawner right here. So let's get up there and grab that. Um, did we? Did I just kill that wither skeleton? I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> did it go through me? Uh. Oh, we did get a Wither Skeleton Skull, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, we got so many of these Wither Skeletons. Alright, alright, alright. Let's get rid of these guys. Yeah, these Blaze are a real nuisance. I guess the thing that we could do is just cardboard box the spawner, or we could just break it. You know what? Let's just break it. Oh, and a bunch of them popped out of that. Oh, jeez. 
I guess we should be mostly okay because of our fire resist potion, but that's just kind of scary. If these blades touch you, they still do a decent amount of damage, so. All right, we're good. You. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> oh my goodness, so many things. So we got a broken blaze spawner, so we can spawn in blaze all we want now if we wanted to do that. And then we got one more spawner shard. All right, come here, guy. Whoa, whoa. Don't aggro the piggies. So we have three drops of evil and six withered dust now. So that's pretty good, I would say. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of this fortress since it's just a brand new one. I don't know what's here. There might be more. There might be more spawners because we've seen them, um, these fortresses before where you can get two of them next to each other, right? But I think you can get a bunch of spawners that could potentially spawn. Just depends on the RNG. But anyway, let me search this fortress, see if we got any more spawners here, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I found another blaze spawner here. Uh, we have all the, the spawner parts that we need. Uh, yeah, we got three here. So that means we got a fourth one back at the base. So we have all the spawners that we need now. So we just need to collect this monster spawner. So cardboard box does not work on the spawner. Okay, so that leaves us with a couple things to do here. Uh, we need to go back to the base. Uh, we need to mark this. New spawner. Save. Okay, we need to go back to the base. We need to make our spawner changer. We need to collect ourselves a witch. We need to apply that to the spawner, and then we're probably just going to turn it into a restored spawner right away. Uh, I think that's pretty much the only thing that we can do. It doesn't look like we can move those spawners. Um, let's see. Is there some kind of a mover transporter? I know there was chest transporters at a certain tier you can move. Is there, uh, what are the other things we have? What? I can't remember those things. Dolly? No dolly. Hmm. I can't think of another way to move a spawner block. Cardboard boxes. Oh, you know what? There is a moving wand. So I wonder if this moving wand would be able to collect a spawner. Right click to take a block. Right click on block to place it down. I wonder if this guy would be able to make... Oh, we need nether stars for that. So we won't be able to test that out very easily. Uh, after all of the wither skeletons that we have killed so far... Let's take a look. We currently have one wither skeleton skull. Yeah, we got like six... Bones, we got eight drops of evil, one wither skeleton skull. So after we do this with witches, we're gonna want to do this again for wither skeletons because we're gonna need a wither skeleton farm. We need both of these guys. Um, yeah, I think I think we just need to go back to the base, make ourselves a spawner changer, find a witch, change that spawner to a witch spawner, and then click it with a drop of evil and get ourselves a restored witch spawner. And then do that again, specifically for Wither Skeletons. I think that's the only thing we can do at this point. So that is our plan. All right, guys. Well, it is now nighttime, and we got everything together for a spawner changer. So we're going to go and make this. What we need to do is try and find ourselves a witch. Yes, a witch. <laughs> Let's go and turn on the night vision. We'll probably do a little fly fly around action, similar to what we did when we tried to get ourselves a... Whoa. Oh, that scared me. I forgot there was a fence right there. I thought that guy was coming right for me. Uh, yeah, when we try to go get ourselves an Enderman before, we'll do a little fly around action, see if we can get ourselves a witch to show up on our radar here. Kind of go down a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, the radar does not appear to show monsters when they're too far below you. Yeah, you, know, you could be seeing them like just fine, but it won't show up on the mini map. Uh, I think there's a way you can fix that, but like if you make it too large, it starts causing lag or something. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to continue going around. There's a few Endermen here. Whoops, almost looked at them. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to find ourselves a witch pretty quickly. All right, guys. So after a little bit of flying around, we finally came across a witch, although there is a lot of these monsters here. And I'm not sure why, but they seem to be moving pretty quickly. Anyway, uh, let's go grab... Yeah, is it just me or is it like the monsters that spawn here are like moving really fast? I'm not sure. Uh, we want to get ourselves just the witch. Let's see if we can get the witch real quick. Got it. 
All right, let's get out of here before we die. <laughs> okay, so Operation Collect the Witch was uh, a success. That wasn't so bad. Uh, so yeah, our um, spawner changer here should say it's of type of witch now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna try and get back to the base. It took a little bit of time to, or we had to go a little bit of a distance to try and get one to spawn. But yeah, now that we have one, things should be a little bit easier, I think. All right, guys, so we are once again back in the nether. Now that we have our spawner changer with the entity witch on it, uh, yeah, this is our one nether fortress that's right by the portal entrance, right? So there is a spawner over here, and it looks like there was a second one over here that I guess I forgot about or didn't notice or whatever. So we're going to take the second one over here, and we are going to convert that to a witch spawner. So let's go ahead and let it spawn once, and then we will... Well, you know what? We could probably just do it right now. Let's just... Click it like this, so it's now a witch spawner. And we'll drop of evil hit. And now we have a disturbed mob spawner. So hopefully, hopefully I did that right. <laughs> that is the right way to do it. Oh my goodness, it feels like it's been forever since I've done the disturbed spawner. Yeah, if I did that wrong, that's gonna be very, very sad with how long that took to get all that stuff going there. All right, let's go and drop down. Cool. Uh, I like how you keep the drop of evil too when you do that. I don't remember what these things are used for outside of this purpose, but yeah, converting a spawner into the Restorb spawner with just a drop of evil and you keep it is definitely nice. So let's put this down over here. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what it looks like. So Restorb spawner, it says witch on it, always on, speed upgrades. Okay, so I don't want to spawn too many monsters down here. I assume this thing does spawn. Oh, you know what? It might be too bright because of all the torches around. I think this acts just like a normal mob spawner. Uh, let's break it. I still doesn't see anything on the tooltip. We'll replace it. Okay, it still says witch. Just making sure all of that is working correctly. All right, so I don't know if it's still nighttime outside. It might be, and if it is, we might be able to set this down, check it out. Nope, it is not nighttime. All right, so let's remove some torches then. I want to see that this thing's working correctly before we do anything else. All right, let's hit F7 here. All right, so it looks like monsters can spawn. We'll just set that right like so. Should be able to get some monsters to spawn around it if this thing is in fact working. I don't believe it takes any GP at all just to work. Or do you have to give it a redstone signal? Honestly, I don't remember how that works now. <laughs> uh, we might have to give it a redstone signal. Let's go grab a, a lever real quick. Uh, yeah, just stick in cobblestone should be just fine. We have 40,000 cobblestone. I've been doing a little bit of mining. Oh, okay, so we didn't need to give it a redstone signal. It just spawned. Oh, and it's still spawning. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of this thing before something bad really happens here. So the witches just poisoned everybody. That's fine. Everybody's gone. All right, so we're good to go. So yes, we should be able to use a restored mob spawner just the way it is. Uh, so now we need to get ourselves a spawner room set up and we need to figure out how we're going to kill these witches. That is another thing that we haven't really discussed yet is how we are going to dispose of these witches. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, so I think we do have dark utilities in this mod pack. Let me look. Yeah, we have dark utilities in here, which gives us these vector plates. Uh, the vector plates, I don't believe, are super expensive. Four of them come from a slime ball, two stone, and then sugar, right? So that's not so bad. And then we can upgrade those to the next tier simply by putting the tier one in the crafting grid to give us the fast ones. But if we want the extreme, we need dark sugar. I don't remember if that uses the dark sugar or not, but honestly, I think the extreme are just a little too fast. I think we should be just fine with uh, using the tier one or the tier two Let's go ahead and get our health back real quick. Yeah, that poison's kind of scary. Okay, so we got to figure out where we're going to set up the mob spawner. Most likely, we'll be setting that up over uh, in the part of our base that doesn't have any structures built. So we might fill in this lake here and set it up over in this general area, or we might just set it up like right over here. Uh, we need to figure out how we're going to kill the monster. So do we have mob grinding utils in this? It does not look like that. Do we have any kind of a spike? We do have these spikes, player kill only items. 
All right, so what does it cost for a diamond spike? Flawless diamond sword. Flawless diamond. All right, all right. Um, so a diamond block turns into that. We're going to need a calculator if we're going to go this route. I think we're only going to need one diamond spike. I don't think we need to go super crazy. So a block of diamond, three more diamonds, and then some diamond swords. That's two, four, six. So nine, so two blocks of diamonds essentially is what it costs to make one diamond spikes. Okay. So again, the flawless diamond, we have to do this in an atomic calculator. I don't remember if we have made an atomic calculator yet. Let's go check that out. Um, I know we made a regular calculator, but I don't know if we have the atomic one. Let's just see what we have as far as calculator goes. We have, yeah, just a regular calculator. So if we search for, I guess we should search for atomic. So the atomic calculator, atomic assembly, that's a lot of emeralds and microchip. Oh, wow. What did I just get into here? Microchip tier two. What are these? Yag ingots. Oh no. Oh my. Okay. Chromium. I think we might have all that stuff. Transistors are from Nichrome Nuggets, Electrum Paper, and Redstone. We should be able to make those. That's not so bad. Oh, man. This is going to be a thing that we're going to have to set up auto crafting for, I do think. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, all right. So we need one of those atomic assemblies and a calculator screen, which is stone, glass, stone. That's pretty easy. Some more diamonds. And that gives us the atomic calculator. I guess it might be a good idea. Uh, before proceeding further to see if there's any other kind of way that we can use to kill these witches automatically. I know there's also, uh, what is that? The Ender IO version. I can't think of the name of it. The zombie, they use the sword. Um, so we have that. I don't know if there's any other types of mob killing mechanisms. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look through the mod pack real quick. See what else our options are. And then we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back over here using more of our raw counting stuff. We're trying to make this YAG ingot, or I guess Y-A-G ingot. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, but yeah, we need four of this Yitrim dust. I'm not sure how to pronounce that either. Two aluminum dust. Two neodymium dust. Uh, these are words that I don't ever use. And then a chromium dust. We're going to do this three recipes just so we don't have to make this stuff anytime soon. But in order to do that... We need to go ahead and pulverize a little bit of aluminum grit here. So, yes, we are taking just our ingots, running it through a sag mill, and getting this grit. All right, so now we should have, every, have everything for three recipes, which should give us 27 ingots, I do believe. Uh, that's a decent amount. Now, I've also started setting up some of the auto crafting here uh, for these other ones, the transistor. So, we have a little bit of auto crafting set up for that. And the microchip tier two, we have auto crafting set up a little bit for that. We might have to set up some more of that actually. Yeah, I do believe so. We're going to need a recipe for red quartz. I just made a bunch of the, what is that stuff called? Electrum nuggets. Yeah, we had like three electrum ingots in the system. I just turned those all on nuggets. Uh, I think we're going to need more than that. So yeah, <laughs> we're trying to make these guys here. We need four of those in total, and then we need some emeralds to make this atomic assembly. And then everything else, I think, is pretty straightforward. Uh, so we're going to need the reinforced stone, which is compressed cobblestone, plus our unknown from forestry. That's four logs together. It makes one of these wood pile things, and that makes a reinforced stone. We had to make this earlier on for something. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, now we have to revisit that <laughs> once again. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so yes, we have a recipe for the transistor set up. Got a recipe for that. And then we got one for the my, the micro, the micro, like I was saying, we got a recipe for this one. Let's make a recipe for the red quartz. Cause it looks like we're going to need a little bit more than what I thought we were going to need of this. All right. So there's one recipe for that. And we'll put that over here into this guy. Cool. All right. So that's all done. So now we should be able to make a recipe for this, I believe. All right. So there's that. Awesome. So now if we tell the system to make four of those, the microchip tier three, 
They won't be able to because we don't have those in the system. Let's put those in there. Microchip tier three. We want four of those. What are we missing? Yeah, Electrum. That's what I thought was going to be holding us up here. Okay, so Electrum is pretty easy. That's gold and silver, and I believe we can just craft it up in the uh, alloy smelter. We should have plenty of silver. Yeah, all right. So we'll just go ahead and throw that through our alloy smelter over here. Yeah, put this on the alloys only. It's uh, one of each. Yeah, so that processes very, very quickly. <laughs> I like that. All right, so now we got this going on. We should just be able to turn that into nuggets. That should be more than enough to get us going here. All right. Put all this away. Cool. So now, microchip tier three. We want four of those. It looks like we have everything together. Yeah, we need 24 of those Yag ingots. Now, this crafting isn't going to happen really fast because <laughs> we are... Just using one interface with one molecular assembler, which does not have any speed upgrades. And it can only process so many things at a time because we don't have any coprocessors either. But now that we got all of those done, we should be able to get some more of this stuff going here. Uh, so let's click on this guy. There's a calculator screen. I don't know if we have any reinforced stone. I'm pretty sure we don't have this atomic assembly yet. What do we have here? Okay, so we need to make the reinforced stone. So we saw that that was wood put into wood piles. So we need one of these things. All right, so there's that. And then I can't remember what else it was. Compressed cobblestone. We have plenty of that now. And then a calculator. You know, this calculator, last time I used it, I remember saying, hey, we're going to run out of power. We're probably going to have to make another one. Because at that time, we weren't even producing RF at all. Now we're able to produce our F. We should be able to take that down here and put that into this guy and recharge it to get some more use out of this thing. Oh yeah, so now it's got a thousand RF. I believe when we first made that, it started with a hundred. I didn't know you could charge it up to a thousand. That's pretty cool. So that thing should last for pretty much forever now. All right, so now that we got a reinforced stone, we should be able to make our atomic calculator. And there it is. Whew, that's a lot of work to make this guy. Quite a lot of work. All right. So we got all that done back to our spike. We're trying to make these flawless diamonds. So that is diamond plus atomic binder plus another diamond makes one of those. Oh, actually I didn't even realize that. Um, so that's actually 12 diamonds that goes into this plus an additional three plus the nine for this block. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than I was thinking. Anyway, the atomic binder, more reinforced stone plus this enriched gold. Enriched gold is gold plus obsidian. And the calculator, let me finish this up and then we'll be back. All right, guys. So I got a bunch of things together here. We should be able to check out this atomic calculator. I don't remember if this thing needs power or not. So let's set it down. It doesn't look like it takes power at all. All right, so that's good. So we need diamond plus atomic binder plus diamond. You know what? I did not get enough diamonds. I thought I had enough. That is not. All right, so we need, there we go, 666. Six, six. Uh, six diamonds, six atomic binder, six more diamonds will give us six flawless diamonds. And we should be able to put that in with a stick like so. And there is three flawless diamond swords, uh, nine attack damage. Yeah, our sword's way better. 17 attack damage. All right. And the spike itself requires a block of diamond, three diamonds, and then those swords. And there we go. There is a diamond spikes. Nice. So we got ourselves a spawner. We got ourselves a way to kill the monsters. Uh, we're going to need a way to collect the drops and all that kind of stuff. And I was just noticing the time, guys. My goodness. Where did all the time go? I don't know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. Next time we'll check out uh, making up the item collection and the spawner room and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be a lot of fun. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.